Hi, and welcome to No Watch Cooking, where we're changing the world one recipe at a time, or in this case, seven recipes at a time with a splash of physics. I am super jazzed to be launching the 2022 Seven Day Sustainable Food Cooking Challenge. We are going to have so much fun. I invite you to join me in my kitchen and cook with me for seven days while we learn to cook in a way that's more sustainable for our planet, for ourselves, for our community, and for the whole world. I'm Carla Ramsdell. I'm a physicist and mechanical engineer and teach in the physics and astronomy department at Appalachian State University. My courses, my research, my outreach, all are in this food, energy, water, climate change, equity nexus. I also keep an independent website to share this information at nowatchcooking.com. Our food system and climate change are connected in a bilateral relationship. Our hugely unsustainable food system, where 10 calories of fossil fuel energy goes into each calorie of food we consume, is leading to our climate disruption. About a third of our human-induced greenhouse gases somehow come from the agri-food sector. And on the flip side, this climate disruption is threatening our ability to grow the food we need. Now, I'm not claiming to have all the answers or to eat and cook in a way that's perfectly sustainable, but I am a huge geek in this space of food and energy and water and sustainability. I love reading articles, watching films, reading books, listening to podcasts, and making connections between those resources and sharing them with other people. So I thought this cooking series would be a fun way to disseminate this knowledge while I'm cooking because no one wants to sit around and just listen to a bunch of science factoids. Okay, well, some of us really like that, but not all of us. We hear over and over again from many organizations active in climate change education that to mitigate climate change, we should shift to a more plant-based whole foods diet. But it can be confusing to understand how to shift from relying on animals for most of our protein to maximizing protein-rich plants on our plate. I hope this series will help. I am not a vegetarian, but increasingly I'm maximizing the plants in my diet. And these recipes are some of the ones that I've grown to love through this process of transitioning from an animal-based eater to a plant-based eater. I will thread the science, specifically the physics, into these recipes, but if you don't think you enjoy science, fear not. This will be digestible physics, assuming no prior knowledge. And once you learn some of this science, your cooking will be more enjoyable, more successful, and hopefully more energy efficient. The recipes in this series will be all plant-based, prioritizing whole grains with lower embodied energy, less land use, less food waste, less water consumption, less single-use packaging, and bonus points. When we eat in a way that's healthier for the planet, it ends up being healthier for us too. And extra bonus points, we'll be cooking these delicious meals for a fraction of the cost as compared to depending on an energy-intensive, overly processed food system. This helps with food insecurity. Let's do a quick summary of these seven meals as a bit of a teaser. We're gonna start out on day one with tacos, where we substitute some or all of the beef for lentils. Day two will be overnight oats, which is kind of like a smoothie you can eat with a spoon. Day three will be a decadent chocolate cake that is steamed and so it never sees an oven. It's really amazing. Day four will be a simple pesto pasta with some roasted red peppers and steamed green beans on the side. Day five will be a southern favorite, cornbread with a buckwheat twist. Day six, we'll transition to beverages and make a ginger lime spritzer. And we'll end up on day seven with roasted curry vegetables with a tahini sauce. I hope you'll enjoy this series. I hope you'll cook with me. Sure, you can sit on the couch, but you'll be so much happier with yourself if you cook along with me, because then you can enjoy the food that you're looking at on the screen. These recipes are chosen so that new cooks will be able to follow along. I have no formal culinary training. Anybody can make these recipes. I'll post all the ingredients and the equipment in the blog linked in this QR code and the web address in the notes of this video. I encourage you to invite people to join you, family, friends, book clubs, work groups, church groups. The pace is completely up to you. 
I hope you'll be inspired by this series to re-embrace a love of home cooking and take control of our food system one meal at a time, transforming our kitchens into climate change mitigation maker spaces. Time spent in the kitchen is fun and establishing these rituals and rhythms to our day can be mentally grounding. I can think of no better transition from my work day to the rest of my day than to cook these simple, delicious, inexpensive meals and then gather around a table with the people I love and enjoy this food and each other. We've shown in the past that when our collective passions are focused on a problem, we can make amazing transformations quickly. The time is now. I mean, technically, the time to make these transformations was a bunch of years ago, but since we missed that opportunity, now the time is now. We can do this. So go out there, purchase your ingredients, strap on your apron. This is delicious citizen science opportunity. I will see you on day one. Thank you.